Nintendo strikes again. I'm tempted to just show you this tweet because it basically just sums up what we're talking about today. Basically what's happening is that Nintendo is issuing a ridiculous amount of copyright strikes to channels for using their IPs again. And the news got out on Twitter, of course, the source of the most factual information, complaining about white people and bullying Pokimane. This YouTuber tweeted out literally three to, I think four pages of copyright strikes in their email. And usually on normal uploads, this YouTuber would have gotten copyright claims on their channel and the video would likely stay up but they wouldn't be making any revenue from it. But no, Nintendo literally blocked their content from ever being enjoyed ever again. Gilva Center is that YouTuber, and this YouTuber just uploads soundtracks of our favorite beloved Nintendo games that we all like to listen to every once in a while. And sadly, they are not the only victim of this, and this is not the only time that this has happened. Yeah, this isn't the first time that Nintendo has abused the copyright system, and this isn't the first time that people are complaining about it. I think this happened a few years back, basically an identical situation where Nintendo lost their trousers and they are just dishing out copyright claims, like this plate of cookies. <laughs> Popular creators have faced this end of the Nintendo copyright claim system. And I don't know much about that era, but all I know is that Video Game Donkey was one of those victims that Nintendo just slapped around. I think Video Game Donkey's case was a review that he did on a game back in 2017, which we all know at this point is fair use by YouTube's own policy because it's a work of commentary slash criticism. If you don't know, reviews fall under fair use of YouTube, where you can make a review on something and you shouldn't have to risk your channel getting copyright stricken. But that didn't happen here. What else is happening? And I said, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So we've established that Nintendo is a little stingy on their music and IPs. And you know, you can make the case, you know, they legally own it. They're allowed to do that. But wait, there's more. This is a segment I'd like to call, How Fast Can Nintendo Piss Off Their Fans? <laughs> They've been sending out mass cease and desists to melee tournaments, which has sparked a hashtag free melee movement, which has turned into hashtag free... What is it? Free... Free smash. Save smash. Save smash. They won't even let their fans play a 19-year-old game. This one is old news, but we all know that you cannot make fan-made Nintendo games even if you put your soul, blood, spit, and tears into it. You will receive a cease and desist order. These modded Joy-Cons, called Eticons, have received a cease and desist order as well, whose profits would have gone to suicide prevention. Or not. But, but still. <laughs> Robin Williams' daughter, Zelda Williams, has received a cease and desist order for being named Zelda. Just kidding, <laughs> but still, can you imagine? In 2018, an Arizona couple got fined over $12 million from Nintendo for running websites that offered free downloads to classic games, also called ROMs, as we know. Or don't know, we don't know. We don't know about ROMs because we buy all of our games legally. Yeah, Nintendo literally fined a couple. The entire company of Nintendo is suing two people. $12 million. And I think the outcome of that was like not in the couple's favor. Like I think that couple still got fined and they have to pay it somehow. And that makes the Zelda Williams joke a lot more believable now. And then the last thing is the music copyright thing and the YouTube copyright stuff. That's the end of this segment. Thanks for tuning in. Some people have argued that, hey, Nintendo owns their IPs. They're allowed to copyright strike and cease and desist events and everything that uses their properties in the way that they don't want them to. And like, that makes sense. That makes legal sense. Nintendo's allowed to do that because they didn't approve of a certain thing. And other people going around re-uploading the exact content to YouTube without transforming it is technically not okay. And it's completely within their legal realm to copyright claim those videos. And if you go on Twitter, there are people that are saying exactly what I just said, and those people don't don't necessarily agree with Nintendo's decision to do all these things, but they're just like saying like, hey, they're legally allowed to do this. But something about this just feels really over-policed by Nintendo. It seems all disingenuous and inherently wrong, if that makes sense. Let's explore that. Holy shit, these cookies taste good. Remember that Arizona couple I was talking about that got fined $12 million by Nintendo? Their site called Love Roms brought in 
17 million people to their site per month. Per month. That's literally 204 million people per year visiting their website and downloading old classic games. What, what does that mean? What does that mean for Nintendo? That means there's millions of potential new fans that are discovering or old fans that are rediscovering Nintendo's work. That's millions of potential new fans, and those new fans will probably buy the Switch, or they'll probably get hooked on Animal Crossing because they played a bootleg version off their site, and they'll want to play the most recent version because they ended up liking the game. And all those classic on Love ROMs and other ROM websites would have never gotten played otherwise. How many of you guys still own a GameCube? And Nintendo just shut it down. They just completely shut down that avenue of potential new fans. And they punished the people behind it who support them. Now let's talk a little more about Melee. How many, like I said, how many people still own a GameCube? How many people would be playing Melee right now in 2020? The game is literally 19 years old, and literally no one would be playing Melee right now if not for Smash tournaments. Melee tournaments have skyrocketed the popularity of the game, and lots of people believe it to be the best Smash game that Nintendo's made. Again, tournaments bring millions of old fans, millions of potential new fans, and all those communities together thanks to Nintendo's work, which you'd think they'd be appreciative for. Especially in a time like this where literally every tournament has been canceled, emulating Melee and playing those tournaments online has kept the community and the games alive. And for those that don't know, if you're wondering how you can do a Melee tournament online, the reason this whole thing kind of started was because those Melee tournaments started using Slippy. And Slippy is a software tool that allows Melee to be played online. And unfortunately, Nintendo sat their ass on the big house tournament and dropped a load all over it. A big stinky, stinky poop. And everyone is pissed off. Way to make your own game completely unplayable and makes the very community that supports your games and your company f***ing hate you. So copyright claiming soundtracks on YouTube is legal, even if you just claimed the revenue from those videos, fine. But to completely block people from listening to it at all doesn't make any sense. Especially considering we can't really listen to them anywhere else. The main place that people go to to listen to soundtracks and orchestrated soundtracks, or OSTs, is YouTube. Spotify has tons of covers and lo-fi remixes of Nintendo songs, but if you want to listen to the actual soundtrack, you gotta go on YouTube. Is Nintendo going to hold Taylor Davis and Michael Ty at gunpoint for them to stop uploading Nintendo covers? Your time's up, Michael. You're surrounded. You can't do this, Barry. Nintendo cover music is my livelihood. You know this. Stop. You know I'm just doing my job, Michael. Wait, just give it up and cooperate. Before you take away my music, I... I have something to confess. I don't even know if it's gonna matter in the end or anything, but... I just, over the years, just... strike after strike from you. I... I don't even know how to say it. I... I just got to know you as a person and... I know. I understand. I feel the same way. Can we just start over? I... I would love that. After you go bankrupt to benefit the company. Even pop star and YouTuber Danny Gonzalez has used Nintendo music in his videos. Other giant creators have also used Nintendo music in their videos relaxing music channels, and lo-fi remix compilations. They're all in danger of being copyright stricken from Nintendo. I've also used Nintendo music in my videos. Will they start striking cover songs, remixes, and bigger channels for using their music? Will they do it on not only YouTube, but Spotify? I mean, they've already tried with Video Game Donkey. We don't know when this will end. And it seems like Nintendo has a midlife crisis every few years and goes on a copyright cease and desist spree. So the best thing to do as a creator right now, I guess, is to just use the YouTube audio library to find songs for your videos and make yourself heard as a Nintendo fan. Don't stop fighting for your community. All right, I'm tired and sad. 
So it's time to look at Twitter, which will either cheer me up or worsen my depression for the rest of the day. It just depends. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at It's Gabby Bell. And if you want to hang out with me on Twitch, I'm at twitch.tv slash Gabby Streams. And subscribe to this channel for clear skin. Bye!